Hey everyone, welcome back to Homegrown Passion. Well, today started out cloudy and now the sunshine's come out. It's like 32 degrees outside, but it's 65, 70 in here. It's just a wonderful day in the greenhouse. So today we're going to go over some harvesting, some seeding, and a bunch of different things we're doing here in the greenhouse. So first off, I want to show you our amazing tomato plants and look at everybody's getting tomatoes on them. So that reminds me, I probably should go through and pollinate these guys. So I've showed you guys this before about pollinating. And we have the uh, toothbrush on a stick for me since I'm so short and can't get the taller ones. So for harvesting, I am going to do some of my spinach back there. You know how I have it cut and come again. So I'm going to go back there and get a bunch off so we can have some beautiful salads. So I'm going to harvest our broccoli microgreens here today. I know they don't look like microgreens. We do like them a little bit bigger, so that's the way I grow them from us. But if I'm selling them at the farm market or to restaurants, I do the, you know, the small size, the micro size, instead of a little bit bigger. So I think this is either the fifth or sixth time I've harvested after, off of these spinach plants. Like I said, it's Corvair, but Johnny Seeds no longer carries that, so I'm going to have to figure out what one I'm going to use next. I do have some more seeds left, and I am going to start another batch. Because I don't like to leave things in my channels too long because the roots get yucky and you get contaminants in them, and you, it's not good for the recirculating system. So I think today I'm going to go up there and do the hydrogen peroxide thing. I think Doug will probably put a link in the video here and show you which one that was where we've done it a couple times over the past couple years. But it's the best way to sprout your spinach. This way you don't waste any growing medium and time. So these plants are about two months old and I'll probably keep them going for another four weeks until I get the other ones up and running. So I've estimated that I've probably gotten a couple pounds of spinach off these few rows here, which is pretty good for just the amount of spinach I have in here. And also one other tip, when you're harvesting, you don't want to take all the leaves off, you know, because the plants need the leaves to grow more. So you want to leave some of the smaller leaves on there. So you remember a video or so ago, I can't remember which one it was, but we were replacing the, uh, the billows and pieces, parts of my uh, system back there for dosing the nutrients for the NFT channels here, and I wasn't getting an even amount of nutrients. It was taking more from tank A, the micronutrients, than tank B, the um, macronutrients. Well, this is what happened. Basil is a, such a good indicator if your nutrients are off. See how yellow those guys are and how yucky the plants look? But then you see the new growth up here. See how nice dark green it's getting. So you know now that they're getting the great, the right nutrients that they need to grow properly. Like the bok choy really doesn't show it as much. The I got some um, kohlrabi back here. It was starting to show a little yellow here in the leaves. So if you pay attention to your plants, you know something's wrong and you better fix it. So I wanted to show you guys my little herb garden I got back here. I got thyme, chives, and cilantro. And I've already harvested some of the cilantro. I'll be able to keep this going for another couple weeks. And you can see too, it's looking very nice and green. The chives, I'd probably keep going for another couple months. They're not quite ready to harvest yet, but once chives get going, they go crazy. And the same with the thyme. Once that gets going, it goes crazy and just blooms out over, all over the place. So it's, it's kind of nice to have our own herbs here. So I need some cilantro for tonight's cooking. Doug is making some kind of fish bowl for us, so he said he needed some fresh cilantro. So I just go ahead and just grab the whole thing by my hand and cut it off and stick it in here and it'll start growing back. So I got some leftover Swiss chard from the CSA, bringing this up to the house because it makes the best omelets. So I'm out in the high tunnel getting ready to harvest some strawberries. It's like 32 degrees outside. It's 81 in here, so it's pretty warm. So get this done and get all these guys harvested. 
Yep, harvesting the strawberries. Mmm, so sweet. So it looks like I have probably another 10 pounds here because that's what I got last time when I harvested. Because some of these guys, I want to let them go a little bit longer. But there's some really nice ones here that are nice and red. And like everything else, I always use my clippers to harvest. So Doug's working on the building back there, so I'm going to go show you that too. So we got a really beautiful day here in December. Not very often we get blue sky like this here in Northeast Ohio. So Doug's working on the garage here, putting the floor joists up. He says we got today and tomorrow, so hopefully tomorrow we get all the joists hung then. So he's got this side already done. Oops, and he dropped one. I better go get it for him. So this whole building is 24 by 24. This half over here is going to be storage. It has eight foot ceilings in it and we'll have the attic up on top. This is going to be where the van is going to be parked and it's going to have 10 foot ceilings with more attic space up. So when you're on the one side is where we're going to have the entrance to it with the lower the eight foot ceilings on the inside. So then you'll have to step up into this side over here. Oh, look at that beautiful blue sky. And we're going to put a couple windows in here because it's always nice to have daylight and regular light coming in and if you're in here you can look out and see what's going on around the farm. So I looked at my calendar here that I keep all my notes on and when I have to seed and when I harvest for my CSA program and I noticed yesterday I was supposed to seed Toco Picana so I'm a day late but that shouldn't make any difference. So I'm seeding it here on the 14th and I am going to harvest it on the 30th of January. So that's how long it takes in the winter time to get this growing so better get this seeded. So I have my oasis cubes here, all wet and ready to go, and you got to make sure you really thor thoroughly wet these. So I got one pad is 276, and I think I got uh, 158 here, so it's 432 that I'm going to seed right now with the Toco Bacana. And it's a multi-dipple, so I can do the multiple seeds in each one of these. And I'll get this seeded, and I use my seeder that I got from Johnny Seeds years ago, and I'll get this started. So I get the seeds down into the little chute here and use my little plant tag to push them into each one of these little holes. So as I'm planting these, I'm taking care to try to get them into the hole because if you get them all over the oasis cube, it's just the waste of seeds because they don't won't germinate. So this may look like it's a tedious seeding process. It's not really. It usually takes me about 15 minutes to do both these pads. Okay, I got these guys all seeded and ready to go. But the next thing I have to do is put my plant tags on them so I know what day I planted them, or seeded them, I should say, and what I'm growing because I always forget. So... Because, you know, when the plants are little, they all look alike. Now they're ready to go into the control tunnel. They'll stay in the control tunnel for a few days until they germinate. It just depends how warm it is in there and how fast they germinate. And once they're germinated, I take them out to the nursery channel. They'll stay in there about 10, 11 days. And then after nursery channels, I put them in the NFT channels to get them growing. Okay. Got the one tray. Let me go get the next one. So since most seeds like to germinate in the dark, I always put the covers on top of them. And it also keeps the humidity in there and keeps them nice and moist for germination. And I reuse my old bottom trays. There, they're all set. Well, I hope you guys liked today's video. And like always, leave me questions, comments, or suggestions down below. And we'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.